The AMC Model 20 rear end, wide track or narrow track. Regarded by most four-wheelers as a junky axle that should be swapped out for a Dana 44 or a Dana 60 or really anything else. But maybe that's premature. Maybe, maybe the Model 20 has some life to it. Well, that's what I thought. After doing a lot of research, I decided to, uh, instead of getting rid of my Model 20, I mean, I had it. It's a wide track from a, a mid-80 CJ7. I thought, well, what are the weak points of the Model 20? And what are the strong points of the Model 20? And what would it cost me to do the upgrades that I wanted to do and vice versa or Dana 44? I also like to keep things on my Jeep uh, as close to factory as I can. So I thought, well, it'd be nice to keep the Model 20 on here and maybe do some upgrades. So you'll see right off the bat a couple things that I did. First off, you'll notice a truss here. Now this is a truss I purchased online. I forget exactly the company I bought it from, small company. Uh, seems like a more of a mom and pop shop, but it was really nicely, really very thick steel. Um, I think that's quarter inch thick steel all the way around. Um, and this truss connects, uh, you know, one side of the axle tube here to the other, and it's a well done. Okay, I'll go around there more in a minute. Uh, but that's one of the weak points of the Model 20 is the tubes and the tubes from spinning. So I've seen a lot of mods where people will weld weld something in these holes here on the side. Um, I connected these together again by, by welding this massive bracket on. I think I paid around $200 for that bracket and was able to get that welded on myself. Um, yeah, we've got drum brakes. We've got drum brakes, there's no hiding that. And there are conversions to uh, disc brakes, but uh, not necessarily the simplest thing from what I understand. Uh, let me take this off for a minute and show you kind of what the drums look like underneath. Here you go, here's what we have. Now I've got the one piece axles and we'll talk more about that in a minute, but just if you're curious about how the drums look and how the setup looks, just so you can get your eyes on it, this is the proper way to install shoes in one of these. So the one piece axles, uh, that's, the other, that's the other weakness, right, is the uh, is the key way that would exist. Now I'll, I'll take you out and I have, an, I have an old Model 20 narrow track, but with the old, um, the old style two-piece axles, okay? I'll show you what it looks like, how you can identify it just by walking up to it. If you, if you should notice a Model 20 that already has these one-piece shafts in it, these do, and you'll know it because you see here we have this, this is all flat here. Now I'll show you a, a Model 20 where this isn't present. Okay, here's a Model 20, you'll see you see this cap on the outside here, this is part of your two-piece setup. So as soon as you see this on a Model 20, you know you don't have one-piece axles, okay? Now it doesn't mean that this couldn't have been welded inside, but it does mean that it is the two-piece setup and not the one-piece setup. And just to show you again, this is indeed a Model 20. Uh, this is a narrow track. So back to the Model 20 here that we're working on, this is a wide track. I'm gonna bring you on over. What I'm doing here is uh, doing new, um, a new bearing on the passenger side, okay, a new oil seal. So you, you, what you have here when you're doing the, uh, the one-piece axle is you have your inner oil seal. You have this sort of um, spacer inside, okay, and then you have the race for the bearing. These aren't all tapped in yet. Um, I'm working on that. There's also some shims that go on uh, the outside of this. Okay, so that's what, that's what gets tapped onto the axle. And, and one unfortunate thing, one thing I don't like about the Model 20, in the setup is the drum, and I'll show you this in a minute, but the backing plate for the drum brakes is connected. You have to press that on at, um, between the bearing and the axle, uh, the end of the axle. So it's kind of, when you want to take it off, you have to, as you can see here, I had to disconnect my brakes. So you have to bleed your brakes if you want to pull the axle shaft out. That's not ideal. Um, you have to disassemble your brakes every time. So that's one con. I'm thinking there might be a way to mod around that. Uh, but out of the box, that's, that's how it works. So that is one con. But just want to show you the inside of what a one-piece uh, setup is. You have an inner oil seal, you have a spacer, and then you have this, uh, this bearing race, okay? And this is, what the, this is what, when you pull the shaft out, this is what, what the axle looks like, okay? And before we go and take a look at the one-piece shaft, just give you a bring you around back here and show you a little bit more. This is what my, uh, the rear side of it looks like. The rear side of the truss. Now I made a hole here. This this hole wasn't there for my um, brake distribution, uh, but I just drilled and tapped a hole to, to mount that. As you can see, we have the other side of the truss, and the truss fit nicely. 
uh, nicely on there. Use again stock brake lines and everything. Nothing, nothing fancy there. I mean, like I said, about a two hundred dollar part, and that brings quite a bit of strength to this Model Twenty. So let's go take a look at. And oh, mind you, um, just so you can see, I have the twenty gallon tank fuel tank. I have plenty of clearance here um, between the skid plate and the, bo the body. I've got about a two and a half three inch lift on this Jeep with thirty fives. Just so you know. But let's go take a look at that one piece axle shaft. So here we are on that one piece shaft, and here you go. Here's the drum brake. Here's our backing plate. You can see our wheel cylinder there, and this is the end of the um, uh, with the outer part where you have your lug nut studs, right? Now, if you look in here, you'll see there's like a cap. There's an oil seal right there. That's an oil seal. So that outer oil seal is pressed in because if we look on this side, you'll see we have our bearing, and then we have that spacer uh, or bearing retainer, and that all has to be pushed in with a pretty good size press. Um, because again, if you look at the size of this shaft, right, uh, your press at home may not be powerful enough if you just have a Harbor Freight job to do what you need to do. So unfortunately, you know, you can't sneak the wheel cylinder out of here through the back. So when you want to take this whole, this whole assembly has to come out if you need to take this axle shaft out and you have to disconnect your brakes. Um, so that's not great. There are supposedly ways, um, I've heard some people talk about modifications they've made to this plate so that you can remove the shaft without taking the plate out. Um, be interesting to, to see that, but uh, as far as I know, that's not possible. So anyway, that's what the shaft looks like, just to give you, a, give you a quick tour of that. Now, in terms of the Model 20, so so far we have our solid, our solid one-piece axles, okay? We have our truss. Now, I forget exactly what this one-piece axle kit costs, uh, something we can look up, but let's just say, Five six hundred dollars for the time being, and around two hundred dollars for that um, for that uh, axle truss that we were looking at. So we're still under a thousand dollars to to make this thing pretty strong and sturdy. One thing I wanted to show you is the um, the ring and pinion in the Model Twenty versus a Dana Forty Four, right? So this is the, the pinion of a Dana Forty Four, and this is the pinion of the Model Twenty. I mean, much bigger pinion. Than the Dana 44. So in terms of strength, I mean, I do think you get a better pinion, uh, ring and pinion setup in the Model 20 than you do in the Dana 44. Now that said, I don't know how common it really is to, to blow either one of these things in either one of the axles, but uh, that's a pretty strong, that's a pretty strong piece. So that's something to laugh at in terms of the Model 20. Um, you know, I probably have about a thousand dollars into this Model 20 I did re-gear it, so there's a little bit more there, actually. I went to 456 gears, uh, and I just did a lock right locker. So about another $1,200, I think, with parts and labor for that as well. So I'm into this Model 20 for about $2,200. Uh, and I still have drum brakes, but part of it for me is the originality that, you know, the Model 20 uh, came came with the Jeep, right? And so I like the idea of retaining that. And the kind of fall for I mean, I have 35, so I'll show you my tires here. Uh, I've got 35s, 12 and a half, uh, I think these are 15s, yeah, 12 and a half, 15s. Uh, these are Goodyear, Wrangler, Kevlar, yeah, 35, 12 and a half, 15s. That's a pretty heavy duty tire. I mean, I haven't done any heavy duty off-roading, but it's been fine. Uh, and, you know, that was before the truss, so the tr I haven't done any four-wheeling since I put the truss on it. So we'll see how that fares. but. Honestly, um, you know, I think it's going to fare well. I, I mean, really, we, we've, we've, been, we've upgraded this axle to a point where really the only thing I wish I had was disc brakes. But outside of the disc brakes, I mean, I, I have no complaints. Um, and, you know, for, for the majority of this, I mean, you know, it's going to fit. Uh, you know, things are just going to fit better, right, because it's stock. I mean, when you're dealing with stock parts... Uh, versus aftermarket or custom-made things. It, it just gets more complicated as the years go on and you're trying to find pieces and, and describe what you have or if you sell your rig to someone else and they're trying to figure out what they have. I mean, I've had to deal with that on many other rigs where there's all kinds of different combinations of uh, disc brake setups or axles from a Scout or from a Wagoneer or from whatever. And, you know, eventually you figure it out, but it always seems like things aren't documented as well as they should be. So what I like about this is it's a, you know, it's an AMC 20 wide track. 
uh, for all intents and purposes, but you have some some of these upgrades on it that are common upgrades. I mean, the One Piece XLs are very, very common upgrades. So it's something that is well known uh, and, and easy to find parts for. And the truss, I mean, you're just gonna do that once. That's not something you're gonna, you're gonna need to ever do again. Um, and it's, again, really strong. You can see it from this angle. Actually, this is a good angle to look at it from. You'll see that it's, you know, you're not gonna hit the fuel tank. You're not gonna hit the top of the body. It, it, it fits in there well, and it's a well done type thing. Um, and you know, we obviously when we welded that on, we uh, we took the, the the cap off here. We drained the fluid out. And you want to be careful when you're welding this. By the way, you want to be careful where you put your ground. You don't want uh, current traveling through the bearings and things like that. Uh, the guy that welded this for me, uh, he knew exactly what to do. You don't want to prematurely wear any of those parts. But uh, like I said, 456 gears and a um, a lock right locker in there, and it, it works great. So that's it. I just kind of wanted to show you the Model 20 and kind of what I have for mods and just say that, you know, it's been serving its purposes for me. Arguably, uh, a Dana 44 probably costs you well-equipped with disc brakes, probably in the $4,000 range. Uh, so this is about half the price and retains some of the factory aesthetics uh, of, the, of the round, uh, infamous round uh, Model 20. And... Again, if I'm looking for brakes, I mean, the brakes are cheap. The drum brakes are a pain, but the parts are cheap. They're easy to come by. Uh, the one-piece axle, all the pieces you need for the one-piece axle, bearings, things like that, you know, relatively inexpensive and easy to come by. So all in all, I, I think it's an interesting way to go. And if you're doing extreme off-road, I mean, you know, you're, you're gonna want full floaters and all kinds of other stuff. But for those of us that aren't doing extreme off-road, but just want something a little beefy, I don't know, don't throw away that Model 20. Give it another thought. You know, don't throw away that Model 20. Maybe give it a second look.